Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. Hope everybody's staying dry. Listen, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at Alden Road and Highway 77 that run by see Principal Mike Kepp installed and the whole staff there, good folks there. Year's effort worth a lifetime of rewards. High today now, we got it at 86 and low tonight 74. The water temperature remains at 86 degrees, so we're in good shape. Uh, a lot of rain, as you can see uh, on the forecast, and then yesterday we had a lot of rain, and, and we're going to uh, continue having rain, it looks like. The river readings, take a look at our river readings. They're not showing a whole lot reflected yet on the on the rain we got, got coming in is reading 7.2 this is Apalachicola now and Apalachicola is going to be a little bit delayed in showing all the rain but the all right the Choctaw Hatchet is starting to go back up where it level off for about three or four days but it's reading 8.5 this morning and it's going to be shooting on up be back up there in flood stage before you know it so uh the Choctaw Hatchet River is on the rise now on the tide chart uh, take a look at our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home were carrying counts. And they're looking at the uh, high tide today at 426. We're looking at uh, Thursday, August the 15th. Got a good strong tide. In fact, look at the weekend, folks. Really nice tides. I've been looking forward to this about two weeks. So I didn't realize our weather wasn't going to cooperate, but uh, we may get some little bit of daylight in between. But uh, the low tide tonight, this afternoon will be at 344. Good strong tides uh, falling out this afternoon. So. All right, our marine forecast will be coming south, uh, southeast at about 10 to 15, so be careful if you get out on the water. All right, that takes care of our weather, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, folks, and good morning, Lieutenant Stan. Good, good morning. Good morning, Winston. Always great to have Stan on. He has so much information. Yeah. So we're going to get started so we don't leave uh, last time. We didn't get to finish. So, Stan, let's get started first. What's the first thing you want to talk about? Well, Winston, a lot of people uh, have uh, asked us about uh, boats that uh, are seemingly abandoned. And, you know, a boat is like a car or a truck. Uh, they belong to somebody. Uh, and, of course, none of us want to see boats left in our bays or waterways. Um, a good example is a boat that we got, uh, a, a photo that we got from one of uh, the people down in your area uh, okay. where you, you know, where you have a, a place down at Port St. Joe. And this is a sailboat that uh, a derelict, it's a derelict sailboat. It's a boat that washed, uh, that washed ashore there in Port St. Joe. The people want something done about it. But the problem is in Florida, there's a legal process. We can't just go take somebody's property. Okay. What you have to do is try to determine who the owner is, mm -hmm. and there is a process where you uh, can try, where we uh, attempt to get that owner to remove that boat. Mm -hmm. And we are successful in most cases. The problem is some people will try and hide um, uh, who the owner is. Uh -oh. If they don't want to uh, be responsible for their boat and do the right thing, They'll sell the boat, uh, then they will uh, remove the registration, try to remove anything that shows who the, who the owner is. And uh, right. so the bottom line is, if you buy a boat, you're responsible for that boat. You can't right. leave your uh, boat and, uh, you know, uh, park somewhere, let it sink, and then, uh, and then worry about, uh, and then hope the state of Florida is going to remove it because we're going to come to you and uh, you're legally responsible for re removing that. We're dealing with one in Port St. Joe right now. Uh, we've got another one. Uh, we've got a uh, almost a 40-foot um, uh, sport fishing boat with a big tower on it over, big uh, stainless steel tower on it over at Navarre right now. Ooh. We're dealing with an individual over there. Uh, that In this case, the guy bought it with the best intentions. Uh, it's been sitting there now for uh, almost two years. Uh, vandals have uh, attempted, they want to see the boat out of there. They've uh, sabotaged some things the uh, owner's done, uh, destroyed the bilge pump, uh, dr even drilled some holes in the below the water line to uh, uh, try to get this boat to go down. And uh, now the owner's got a mess on his hands, but the owner is doing the right thing. He's trying to get it out of there. Uh -huh. But the bottom line is, you buy it, you own it. And we don't, it's not the state of Florida's boat just because you park it there, it's your boat and uh, you're, responsible. you're responsible for getting it out and any costs that come with that. Yeah. 
It doesn't matter what size right. boat it is. And in the case of the sailboat in Port St. Joe, uh, uh, one of your uh, one of the people that you may know that watches the show, uh, Mr. Lord, uh, emailed us, and and we are going through the legal process. Uh, we're uh, after we run through this first phase in which we've put a placard on the boat, establishing it as a derelict vessel. Uh, then uh, actually the county can remove the boat, and then. Uh, um, uh, the county does have funds for that, and if not, then the boat can be uh, removed by citizens in the community, but we have to post that. We have to have an officer there, so we'll see how that goes. That's going to be interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's a problem all over the state of Florida, yeah, yeah. Uh, not just here, and it doesn't matter if it's a small boat or if it's a, it can be something as big as a shrimp boat, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you can imagine the you know, the problems yeah. there. But yeah. we uh, we do attempt to remove these vessels and uh, or get the owners to remove them. Okay, all, all right. right, very good. All right, what does it go next? Well, the, the other thing I was gonna talk about, Winston, is the uh, 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 snapper season. Uh, there's uh, one thing that's been in the news recently is that um, is NOAA has proposed an additional snapper season for the fall, and we're starting to get some calls about that. We don't know how that's going to shake out. They have proposed is they've increased the total allowable catch mm -hmm. for both the recreational and commercial sector to over 11 million pounds from its present. I think it's over 8 million pounds now. Uh, but the, what we don't know right now, we haven't been told, I should say, by NOAA is, is um, how many fish they believe were caught uh, during this June through July, this 44-day season. Mm -hmm. So once they tell us that, then uh, and then they'll tell us how many days that additional days it'll be, and then and then it'll be up to uh, our agency to see if we establish a fall season. And do, I, do we know um, a timeline? Do they know when we're going to tell us this? Or? Well, NOAA has indicated in all of their correspondence, and, and in in fact uh, a news release that they just sent out that they're gonna know this by the middle to uh, latter part of August. Okay. So our commission actually meets in Pensacola on uh, September 5 and 6. So I, I feel pretty confident uh, that they'll have to, you know, yeah. if, if the commissioners will, if they're gonna make a, you know, they'll, uh, they'll be told by then and make a decision, I, I hope, by then. Well, you know, saying so, a, lot of, a lot of folks have already, uh, Sort of making trip plans already, including myself. I've already got a couple. Of, we may be jumping the gun, but we well, I, we I wouldn't. Got some dates yeah, we're X'd out. I wouldn't put gas in the boat just okay. yet. I would. Uh, I would wait, but we'll see what um, they said. It would be a maximum of 21 days, but it all depended on how many fish and if the number of fish went over the total allowable catch for. Uh, 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 for the recreational sector, so we'll we'll see. So I may we'll have jumped the gun, okay? Because I have no. October first, October fourth, and fifth, and October twelfth already xed out for snapper. So we'll well, a better way. I, I don't know that you, do you would have to x take those x's <laughs> off your calendar. I, I would wait though about, um, particularly if somebody's coming in from a long way yeah. and uh, they're planning on going snapper. You I may have to you, go brim you fishing. Heard that. To wait a minute. You, you may have to go brim fishing brim one of these days. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. Anyway. All right, let's take this break and we'll be right back. Hi, right, welcome back. Sitting here with Lieutenant Stan Kirkland, originally for Jackson County boy who made it all the way down to Bay County. Yep, yep, so, uh, there we go. Uh, listen, you know, uh, we're riding, uh, sort of winding down on scallop season. Got a couple of weeks left in all, and I've, I've heard a lot of mixed reports and got a lot of pictures, and some people have found them, some people didn't find them on, on your end. What, what's going on on your end? Well, you know, we every year we have staff, and this year I think our staff dropped the ball and didn't didn't get you involved, and I apologize about that, Winston, but every year our staff does these surveys. Mm -hmm. uh, they do the surveys in five areas. They go to Crystal River, uh, Steenahatchee. Um, uh, they do them in Hernando County in the bays there, St. Mark's, and also in St. Joe Bay. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year, by far, the majority of the scallops were in uh, Crystal River and Steenhatchee. Not the numbers off the chart like we have some years. And St. Joe Bay came in third. But everybody I've talked to, the, and, and we've had several staff that have gone down to Crystal River, they didn't have any problems. The problem has been the weather. And as you well know, 
it's kind of uh, tough to scallop when it's raining, the water's cold, you're it's cold. This is not fun. And it's yeah. miserable. Yeah. It's you almost need a wetsuit and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, no, nobody enjoys doing that. And, you know, here we are in rain now and mm -hmm. it's a, uh, projected to rain through the weekend. Yeah. So it looks like this weekend may be a wash with this uh, tropical weather that uh, may be over us. So we're running out of time. Uh, they, of course, the... Uh, we can uh, we can scallop on into September, uh, September uh, 20, 25th, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, so uh, probably uh, and more than likely we'll have good weather in September. But right now it's just kind of a kind of a wash. Yeah, so. yeah. And I like your idea of the, of the card you made. Uh, I tell you, we that. really, you know, I, I got a lot of pictures in July and a lot of those pictures had those small scallops in it. And uh I think that's a great idea. I wish we could sort of further along. Maybe it don't have to be a law, but maybe it's just a suggestion because a lot of people would yeah. go along with it if they knew. A lot of folks out there are coming down from Georgia and Alabama and just don't know. Well, and I see them. And, and you know, Winston, there's nothing wrong as a private citizen. Yeah. Uh, and I agree with you about, you know, yeah. and I've, I, I know I've talked to other people in the community and they, they feel like it's almost a crime to take small scholars. Yeah. Well, when you start putting things in regulation, yeah. it, it, it changes everything, and then it puts the onus on the officer, and, and yeah. I'm not sure we need that uh, personally, but I agree with what you're doing, and it's a great conservation tool. Uh, if you had a way to laminate some of those yeah. and encourage people, uh, you may, know. We may do know. that as yeah. a, uh, maybe one of our class you projects know. this year, get some kids right. excited about it, but uh, you know, it's sort of a catch one and two. Uh, if you and I do this now, I get some around July Fourth to eat, and I don't scallop anymore in July. But, but then, and I have people, friends of right. mine, do the same thing, and they wait till August. But then, what happens? All these people go in July and just get ice chest fulls and bucket fulls and all. And when we go back in August, they're not quite as many. So, you know, well, the scallops do move too. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, we're noticing, and I talked to uh, some of our staff this week, particularly over in the Crystal River area. Uh, in uh, Steenhatchy area, some of the scallops are moving apparently, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's fresh water. I don't know if it's from some other factor. Mm -hmm. But they're saying the scallops are moving from three and four feet of water out to five and six yep. feet of water. Yep. And I don't know if it's because they're harvesting the pulling, uh, picking up the ones that are closer to shore, mm -hmm. or but they do move. We know they, you know, we yep. know as a bivalve they can propel themselves. They can move. So anyway, but. A lot of scallops, and uh, mm -hmm. hopefully the weather will improve. Uh, I think everybody's tired of this rain. Yeah, I know it. All right, listen, today's uh, August 15th, and right. uh, we're getting ready for uh, gator season. Weston, today we, we uh, the starts the uh, 2013 alligator hunting season. Florida sells the second highest number of permits. Uh, in, in, uh, now, Louisiana has a different setup. But, and they issue more permits than we do, but we issued 6,363 permits this year. Uh, we had 15, uh, um, if I'm mistaken, it was right at 15,000 applicants. So not everybody got a permit. Each, per, uh, each permittee can, can take up to two alligators. The vast majority of the permits are issued uh, from, from basically in, in South Florida up to North Florida, and I'm not including the panhandle. Mm -hmm. The, we do issue permits in the Panhandle. Uh, I looked at three counties the other day, Santa Rosa, Okaloosa, and uh, Walton counties, and I think we issued somewhere around 200 and some odd permits in those counties. Mm. But the vast majority of those 6,000 permits are, you know, in, you know, uh, elsewhere in Peninsula, Florida. But uh, uh, alligator hide prices uh, have started to come back up, so for those people that take their two alligators they can they can sell the they can sell the alligator to a processor or they can sell the the, the processor can sell the meat in hides okay. you can buy alligator meat a lot of people uh, you have to buy it in five pound quantities uh, but uh, anticipate being a good season mm -hmm. uh, one final thing one of the criticisms we get sometimes is in in uh, and we've looked at this is that too many permits go to non-residents and that simply is, is, a, is folly, it, it's not true. We looked the last two years and basically 1% of the permits of the 6,363 permits go to non-residents, so 1%, 99% yeah, go to Florida Good. residents. 
and we, we get 1.2 percent this year went to non-resident. Last year it was less than one percent. So it's it's a, right. over a thousand. It's a thousand and twenty-two dollars for a non-resident to buy a license, uh, a buy a permit. Wow. It's uh, two hundred and seventy-two dollars for a resident to buy a permit. So okay. we expect a good season. The rain, uh, typically the harvest, is uh, is not quite as high. Uh, it, it, they typically fill about 60 to 65 percent of the permits okay. uh, in an average year, but when you get a lot of rain, there's more places for alligators to go, mm -hmm. and uh, the harvest sometimes is a little. Now, little when, when does the season end? Uh, it actually goes till November the first. Okay, November. Okay. So they have a they have a week on the front end, and you're told when you get your permit. You have a week on the front end, and then you're dead in the water. So if you don't get your two alligators. Uh, in that first week, you got to wait until your next time comes. But it's to give everybody. There's four oh, weeks, okay. so you're you're one. You're divided into four camps. Okay. Everybody gets a a week up front to uh, to attempt to get their two gators, and then then we have the last part of the season for uh, okay. everybody that hadn't figured out how to do it. So <laughs> okay. anyway, very good. So, that's, uh, right. we'll see what kind of season we have. All right, we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and take our last break right now, then we'll come on back with Stan, okay? Hi, right, welcome back. Here with Lieutenant Stan Kirkland, a good outdoorsman in his own right. Have you had much luck lately? Or? I had, Winston, I hadn't been fishing in uh, several weeks with all the rain, plus we moved uh, Brandon to, had uh, moved Brandon, then we've had That's a right. wedding, and so I'm, I'm a lot of you know, social things have interrupted my uh, my, my fishing schedule. This conversation, I have this with a lot of outdoorsmen, I, I use one term, life gets in the way. Yeah. And I, sometimes it does yeah. get in the way of doing outdoor things. Let's take a look at our fishing game forecast for today, brought to us by Mark Cowart. Oh, Cowart, uh, okay, Mark Cowart works with Edgewater Beach Realty, and he can help you anyway, and any of your real estate needs. We're looking at our times now, we're looking at this morning, at 7.30 to 9.30, right after the show, you can go out if you don't get wet and catch you some fish. Or tonight, looking at 7.57 to 9.57, all right, two two-hour blocks, and uh, really believe in this, okay? Thank you, Mark Coward, for sponsoring that on Panhandle Outdoors. Now, this next picture, while well, we get it set up now, Stan's going to talk about it, but I was not aware of this. It, it's, it's interesting, and it's something that we really need to be aware of. Uh, not just the outdoors, yeah. but just really citizens. Well, Winston, this is one of the things we, we're pointing out to uh, one of our officers called me. These are uh, pest strips that are sold locally um, and uh, without getting in the name of the business or the company. Let me, let me say, if you buy these sticky pest strips, these pest strips, some of them will kill songbirds. This one, it kills several cardinals uh, and a hummingbird. Um, they're uh, they're sold at seed and, some seed and feed stores. Mm -hmm. If you're going to use them for fly control around barns and places like that, make sure you put them inside of something like uh, chicken wire. Okay. In other words, make a just make an oval yeah. uh, uh, or make a, a circle out of the chicken wire, a piece of chicken wire. Put them in there, close the ends where birds can't get in there because. Uh, you know the birds are going to go after the flies and stuff, and then they get they get stuck. and And uh, we've contacted Audubon Society, yeah. trying to get the company to see if, uh, and hopefully Audubon can can get through to the company to see if they can modify it to put them in something where they don't kill kill songbirds. Yeah. But uh, uh, until yeah. then, let's take care of it ourselves and your hardware cloth, chicken uh, wire, anything like right that. like that. The flies yeah, can yeah. go through that to the yeah. pest strip. And uh, but uh, you know they kill songbirds if you just stick them out. So and I appreciate uh, yeah. the officer who uh, one of our officers brought yeah. this to uh, to our attention. Yeah, I was uh, not aware of that either. Yeah. Okay. Winston, right. uh, I saw this week where um, uh, Miss, state of Miss, or last week where the state of Mississippi has modified their rules allowing people to uh, take wild hogs. I, I think they've uh, determined they're a problem in in Mississippi, but. You know, across Florida, uh, 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 Georgia, Alabama, all across the South, uh, even into Texas. I think I saw recently where uh, Texas says they have uh, it, it's it's several million uh, feral hogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, I went out there a couple of years ago. I was asked to speak, and I went out there. And one of the guys told me when I was there, they don't eat them. He said they shoot them and leave them lay. He said we just consider them a pest. Mm -hmm. And uh, he told me he had killed over a hundred. He said he had killed 167 on his ranch, oh, and he really? said, "I can't see that I've made any difference." Wow! 
and uh, they you do know, a lot of damage on, on ranches. Right, and ranches, you know, cattle, uh, horses, you know, they'll uh, they'll create these uh, places where they dig for, uh, you know, everything they're trying to eat and uh, root up pastures, they'll root up uh, uh, food plots, lawns, whatever. Right around here now, we've even got people that are trapping wild hogs mm -hmm. to try to get rid of them. Uh, so if you got a hog problem, you can control them on your own property uh, here in Florida, day or night. Uh, feral hogs are essentially your, uh, they're your property, uh, are tr like uh, livestock. If they're on your property, you can control them on your place. So Mississippi realized that the same problem. They said the same thing, just get rid of them any way you can. Huh? Yeah, that was, that was uh, in essence what they were saying, but uh, they're all over the country. And I yeah. saw some, st uh, I've been, uh, I've been seeing some states are uh, uh, up uh, in the Midwest are doing everything they can to keep hogs out of their state, but I'm afraid it's like uh, yeah, trying to stop the more. march of you know fire ants. Yeah. It, it's going to be a tough task. So, uh -huh. so we'll see. We'll see how th how that goes. Okay. All right, uh, <clears throat> Winston. I know we're short on time, but I wanted to mention this. Uh, within the next day or so, you'll see the uh, rollout of what um, is a, a kind of been a, a over a year long process to establish uh, new deer regs for, not for this upcoming season, everything's set for this year, yep. but for the 2014, 2015 uh, seasons where uh, the commission, uh, we're looking at some proposals. Of course, the commissioners have not acted on this. We uh, will we'll end up taking this to the commission at some point, but it's the proposals for what we call Deer Management Unit 1, which mm -hmm. is below the Interstate 10, and uh, Deer Management Unit 2, which is above uh, Interstate 10, and, and also a discussion about Antlers Deer Day. So it's all in the discussion phase right now. We have it, uh, there's nothing in, um, in stone that says this is what's going to happen, but these are the propos proposals from staff based on uh, telephone interviews, public okay. meetings, web surveys. We had a technical assistance group that met, and uh, we'll see how that goes. All right. All right. Well, Stan, thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Winston. Good Always enjoy being on with you. Always great to have Stan on. Okay, folks, if you see him, uh, talk to him about hunting and fishing. He does, always has some good points for you. Thank you all for watching Panhandle Outdoors. We appreciate your viewership. Do something good for somebody today, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.